सर गुड इवनिंग एवरी नमस्कार सर नमस्ते गुड इवनिंग नमस्कार जय सर गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग सर गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग फ्रेंड्स इट इज एट ओ क्लॉक एट टू टू मिनट्स पास एट thank you for joining for this ongoing uh, post graduate clinics which happens on all fridays uh, we have two important exam cases to be presented by the institute of medical sciences kindly contributed by kindly contributed by professor mani selvi ma'am so we have dr gautam with the case of obstructive jaundice and we have a case of uh, carcinoma breast by dr sabari Can you try sharing your PowerPoint and start your presentation? We have the honor of having Professor Satish Mehta, sir, from Ranchi. Sir, good evening, sir. Thank you for joining. Good evening. Good evening. Thanks. Thank you very much, sir. Satish, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Gautam, are you with us? Gautam, okay. Uh, Sabri, you start your case, ma. First, sir, be ready, sir. Uh, you, sir? Uh, the first case is going to be Carson or Presser. Gautam, please start your case. Please bear with us, sir. No, no issue. No issue at all. Yes, sir. Sabri, please start your presentation, Kana. All the best to you. Uh, yes, sir. I'm starting. Thank you, sir. चेन्नई Lump in the right breast for past two months. History of presenting illness. Uh, patient was apparently normal two months back. Then she noticed the lump in the right breast while bathing. The lump was small to start with and gradually progressed to attain the present size. There is no history of pain, no history of nipple discharge, there is no history of nipple retraction, no history of fever, no history of trauma, no history of loss of weight or appetite. There is no history of bone pain. There is no history of chest pain, cough, hematitis. Difficulty in breathing. There is no history of jaundice, abdominal pain, or abdominal distension. There is no history of any headache, blurring of vision, or seizures. A past history. Patient is a known case of chronic kidney disease. She was diagnosed five years back, and she is under medical management, not on any dialysis. She has a history of hysterectomy done twenty years back. Uh, the hysterectomy was done for uterine prolapse, according to the patient, but. The records are not available with her at the moment. Uh, there is no history of any other comorbidities. There is no history of irradiation in the past. There is no history of previous investigations or interventions to the breast. There is no history of any OCT intake or hormone replacement therapy. Personal history: uh, the patient consumes non-vegetarian diet. There is history of no history of any addictions. Her blood and bowel and bladder habits are normal. Her sleep and appetite are normal. Menstrual and obstetric history. Uh, patient at time menarche at the age of 15 years. She is married at 17 years. Had regular cycles. Uh, no history of major dysmenorrhea. P4 L4 A1 is her obstetric score. First childbirth at 19 years of age. Last childbirth at 27 years of age. Breastfed all children for a period of one year each. Uh, Pupil sterilization was done 32 years ago. She had uh, the surgical. I'm sorry, uh, it was a spelling mistake. Uh, there is no surgical menopause. Family history: uh, no history of carcinoma of breast uh, in family. Uh, there is no history of BRCA related malignancies in family, like pancreas, prostate, colorectal, and ovarian malignancy. To summarize my history: uh, a 15-year-old postmenopausal woman with uh, complaints of painless lump in the right breast for past two months, with no history of nipple discharge or nipple retraction, or no other metastatic symptoms. Given complaints. I would like to examine the breast for a possible malignancy.
Dr. Sabri. Sir, yes, sir. Am I audible? Am I audible? Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Dr. Sabri. Yes, sir. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Yeah, uh, you you are taken a fairly detailed physical uh, display. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, you have mentioned so many no symptoms. Sir. In word, in yes, one sir. word, what you would like to put them as? Uh, uh, sir, there is uh, no uh, history of any metastatic symptoms. Yeah. In one word, you would like to put it as a no symptoms register for any metastatic disease. Okay. Okay. Sir. In the history, also mentioned about history. History, we particularly ask you the details. Why she has undergone such activity? What is the need for that? Why you want to go into details about it? Sir, uh, if the patient had uh, undergone a hysterectomy, uh, along with the oophorectomy, uh, then uh, the patient would have uh, uttered a surgical menopause earlier, and that would have reduced their incidence of uh, risk of CM breast. Okay, that is that is one important point you have noticed. Anything else other than asking that, particularly about the details about the reason for patient undergoing hysterectomy? Uh, if it was there any uh, malignancy, uh, did she undergo surgery for yeah. any malignancy in uterus? Yes, that is, that is very important. Suppose this patient has undergone surgery for a malignancy like endometrial carcinoma. Ultimately, yes, if she comes into the higher risk grade group of developing a malignant breast cancer. Breast cancer. Otherwise, yes, reverse, reverse is also true. The reverse is also true. Hmm. Okay. So, what is your clinical diagnosis in this case? Okay. Sir, uh, I, I suspect. Sorry, yes, sir. You are mentioned. Yes, sir. No history of addiction. Why do you ask for that? No uh, history of addiction. Sir, uh, I can't. Is it tobacco consumption, sir? Tobacco or alcohol consumption? Is that only alcohol addiction will cause carcinoma? Yes. Uh, no, sir. Alcohol intake. So you, the word addiction should not be used here because even use of alcohol. What is the percentage? Yes, why alcohol produces carcinoma breast? Uh, yeah. What is the pathogenesis uh, by alcohol uh, causing carcinoma, especially in a breast carcinoma? So it can peripheral yeah, conversion of direct role in increasing the estrogen. And also okay. making the tumorogenesis, the changes in the breast response to the estrogen is also increased by the alcohol. And it is almost 30 to 40 percentage increase is happening. It is dose dependent, but not addiction dependent. So you cannot use the word addiction here. Either tobacco okay. is not much, but alcohol is very important in the case when you are using that term. So whether the okay. patient has a habit of taking alcohol or not, must okay. be mentioned, not there is an addiction. And okay, sir. Sure. you have mentioned about OCP and HRT. Yes, what sir. Understanding on that, sir. Uh, uh, the old regimens of OCP, there was high dose of estrogen, sir. It, uh, oh, it increased the risk of. Your patient age. Your patient is. Fifty-nine years, around sixty years. Fifty-nine year old lady. What is the importance of OCP? Sir, I ask for any. No, actually, the history of HRT is significant here, sir. More. I am I am asking based on the what you have mentioned there. So OCP yes. as much as possible, try to avoid because even in a large randomized studies which has proved is a very, very less significant increase, less than seven percentage. But okay. not, not significant. And that too, people who are continuously using, minimum more than 10 years if they are using for a long time. The age a lady comes to you at the age of 45, if she is on your OCP. Yes, it can be considered as a one of the cause, but not as a people who are old, what they are not doing. So in HRT, okay. they are using what HRT is most I mean, prone for malignancy. Uh, sir, HRT with the... No, HRT people use in a two way, either combination, estrogen and progesterone or estrogen alone. So which one is more malignant? Est more... Sir, estrogen alone, sir. Yeah. Unopposed estrogen. No, that was... Uh, estrogen alone is... Yes, sir. Estrogen alone is not not producing malignancy more. It is only the combination. Estrogen, progesterone okay. combination when they use HRT. So that okay. is so your, your history must be a little more uh, specific and ask into the details of that. And again, okay. uh, BRCA 1 and 2, when you are talking on that, and what is the purpose of asking for that in this case? 
sorry, if, uh, here see one to uh, assess the risk factors for uh, in insulin insufficiency. So you think at the age of 59, a lady is coming no, to sir. or concentrating on that? Uh, no, sir. At this age, I will not concentrate, sir. If it is occurring in the age, I would uh, look more into no, that. Already question. mentioned there is no carcinoma of the breast in the family. Then you are yes, having sir. a hereditary. What is the difference between familial cancer and hereditary cancer? So, uh, heredity is the inheritance of known genetic mutations, sir. Uh, familial is uh, uh, a cluster of uh, genetic mutations, unknown family uh, genetic mutations that are inherited. Uh, in sometimes in families there will be a shared uh, uh, exposure to an environment, shared environment. Sir. You have asked for the diplovia, Caesar, and all. What is the metastatic? Why do you ask that? Sir, you have to assess in case of. In spinal meds, in a brain meds, and it's in a case of a spinal meds. How do you get brain meds? Sir, brain meds through uh, hematologists. No, that is all. everybody knows. No, nobody knows it goes through the lymphatic through the brain. Yes. But as a postgraduate, can you trace that how from the breast it will go to the brain? What is the common way it is going to the brain? How the common way how it goes to the spine? So it goes through posterior intercostal veins to ascygos and then it goes to bats and plexus and uh, it spreads to the vertebra. Ascygos is a different pathway, posterior intercostal to the bats. So from the bats to the subdural venous sinus, it goes to the venous sinus and then it goes to the ear. The same pathway as you talk about the pathway to the spine, from there yes, it goes to the posterior intercostal sinus and it goes to that. So whenever you are talking on the metastatic symptoms, you must be aware of how it is reaching that particular site and how the, what symptoms wow. are that will produce. Oh, okay, sir. If the family history is there, yes, sir. Then what do you ask in the family history? Like somebody mother had the breast cancer. So what are you going to ask? Sir, uh, at what age did the mother had the uh, diagnosis of CA breast? And yes. uh, was it uh, unilateral or bilateral? Uh, and how was the prognosis? Right. Okay. Now, can you tell what are the various modifiable risk factor for the cancer breast and non-modifiable risk factor for the cancer breast? Sir, uh, non-modifiable uh, risk factors are age, uh, family history, um, age, family history, and uh, the modifiable risk factors are uh, uh, that uh, smoking, uh, alcohol, uh, uh, either OCB intake, OCB, uh, hormone replacement therapy, uh, breastfeeding, these are all uh, modifying risk factors. And what are the absolute risk factors and what are the relative risk factors? So, uh, absolute risk factors are uh, uh, age, um, history of uh, CA breast, vast history of carcinoma breast, uh, BRCA mutation, atypical ductal hyperplasia. Uh, age and sex. Uh, age and sex. And family history, uh, these are uh, absolute uh, risk factors. Sir. Relative risk factors are all those hormonal risk factors like early menarche, late menopause, uh, nulli parity. All these are relative risk factors. Sir. Now tell if a one centimeter palpable tumor is there, how long that lady is harboring the cancer? Sir, it will take at least uh, five years to become palpable. What is the tumor doubling time of the cancer breast? Sir, uh, around uh, three to four months. How much? Three to four months, sir. Okay, around 100 days, yeah. Okay, that's fine. Yes. Good. Okay. What doubling you get the mass, one centimeter mass? Uh, sir, after 30 doublings, you will get. What the doubling you will get the metastasis? Sir, at 20, after 20 doublings, it will. Yeah, it has the potential to metastasis. You said early menarche is a risk factor. Why? Sir, uh, in early in early menarche, the early cycles are uh, usually uh, uh, anovulatory cycles, sir. There won't be no uh, progesterone influence in those cycles. Why it is uh, sir, Why it is anovulatory? Sir, uh, sir uh, the hypothalamic axis uh, will not be developed. Uh, sir, it will be at uh, still at a development phase. So the LH surge will not be there. So it is a yeah, improper development or the early development is not matured enough to produce yes. a LH surge. Okay. Sir.
shall i proceed with the examination yes ma'am yeah. dr ishwar sir can she proceed Yes, sir. Can she proceed, Mr. Sir? Proceed, proceed. Go ahead. Yes, yes, sir. You can proceed. Yes. yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, examination on general examination. Uh, the patient was moderately built and nourished. He is conscious, oriented, febrile, or idle state of fire. There is no pallor, ectus, cyanosis, clubbing, or any generalized infection. But they are getting it. Her ECG score was one. Her vitals were first rate was eighty per minute, regular, normal volume and character. BP was one thirty per ninety. Measured in the right arm at sitting posture. Respiratory rate was 16 per minute. Temperature was normal. SPO2 was 98 percent in room air. After getting consent from the patient, uh, in the presence of Sabir, I mean, you mentioned ECOG one. What do you mean yes, by sir. that? Why do you want to put that in the ECOG one? Sir, patient is able to carry on her uh, regular, regular or day-to-day -day work activities very so well, sir. There is no limitation in her activities. So that means what? Zero. ECOG one. ECOG one is mild activity. She will not be able to do the normal activity. Yes, the mild restriction is there. She so cannot be able to stir in a certain. So your patient yes. has no restriction. Yes. She is normal. She yes. has score would have been zero, I think. Not even pain. So you must be putting uh, that person ECOG. What is ECOG? Zero. Sir, uh, European Cooperative Oncology Group uh, score. Okay. Cooperative Oncology Group. Yes. Is it called as a score or grade? Sir, it's grading, sir. Grading, grading zero to five. Only performance scale, or you must put it as a performance grade. No. Grading, sir. When you are putting I, enough I, score, you have to put as a scale. It is yes, ten, ten. They are putting. No, I again, think uh, if I am not wrong, it is a uh, Eastern. I think Eastern. Eastern, not European, sir. Eastern. Just check Eastern. that. Eastern. Eastern. Oh, okay. yes. Eastern. Eastern, sir. Uh, just one question to you because this discussion came. Why not Karnofsky here? Just, just for your my knowledge, let me check. Why not Karnofsky? That's also a performance state. No? Yes. Why so this what came? Is the what is the difference between these two? Then? Why this came? Especially you are talking about oncology here, no? So, yes, sir. So, so I'm giving a clue. So, because, yes, it is not yes. just that performance is enough here because they have to undergo Radiation, chemotherapy, yes, chemotherapy. Targeted, targeted therapy, so many things here. Okay. Yes. Karnofsky can also become, uh, you know, uh, for uh, benign disease also, for your information. Yes. Okay. Right. Yes. Please, please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, after getting consent from the patient, uh, in the presence of a female attendant with maintained adequate privacy, patient was exposed up to weight and examined in a well lit form. Examination of uh, right breast. Inspection. Patient in a recumbent position with the arms by the side. Right breast is slightly higher than the left breast and no visible lump was seen. Skin of the breast. Pure orange appears noted in the uh, lower inner quadrant. Occurring seen in the lower inner quadrant. Previous coronary biopsy scar was seen in the lower inner quadrant. No ulcerations or satellite, nod satellite nodules. There was no the dilated veins or Hello? Sabri, your voice is not coming. Sabri, you are there? Sabri? I think he has some issues with the connectivity, I think, sir. Sabri? We'll allow one minute, sir. If not, Gautam yeah, yeah, is there. Yeah, I, I think it will come back. So, just to, uh, just to fill the gap. Uh, yes, sir, please, sir. Nothing. Uh, uh, there is no point in go on telling uh, as Dr. Ishwar Hosmani has told all of us since PGs are here. All that uh, no, 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 like uh, uh, no seizures he has written. Thank God he has not written no coma and death and other things. So what I am trying to tell is uh, all for all postgraduates, this applies to all malignancies. Mm -hmm. Most common one or two symptoms related to metastasis is accepted. For example, uh, especially breast. All of us know. Go back it. 
recent backache. That word should have come. Recent backache. You have written no backache. No, all the no, no, no. Re backache and maybe cough, cough. More than dyspnea. That's because, please remember, pulmonary metastasis, more than pulmonary metastasis, you get pleural effusion. That is because of the same paravertebral... <laughs> So, so what I want, want to tell our Sabri is that quick one or two organ can be definitely asked, but don't go on telling uh, our students all do the same thing. No history of abdominal distension, no history of joint, mm -hmm. no history of uh, so many things that is not required. Okay, please continue. Sorry. Yes. Sabri, go ahead. Where is he now? He came in. Sabri? Stream. Sabri, you are there? Uh, yes, sir. Sir, uh, am I on? Yes, sir. Sabri, go ahead, please. Uh, uh, sorry, sir. There are slight network interruptions. Yes. Don't worry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, on raising the arms, arms overhead, uh, uh, puckering of the skin became more prominent, and uh, inframammary fold uh, was distorted. There is no axillary fullness seen. On leaning forwards, uh, both breasts fall forward equally. On pressing against the waist, there is no evidence. Uh, no evidence changes noted. Uh, there, on examination of the arm, there was no edema. Uh, in axilla, there was no fullness or swelling visible. Sir. Palpation. Uh, there was no local rise in temperature. Uh, no tenderness. A 3 cross 2 centimeter lump is palpable in the uh, lower inner quadrant. Ill defined margin, irregular surface, was hard in consistency. It moves along with the breast tissue. The skin was not pinchable. Uh, when the arms was pressed against the hip, the lump was not fixed to pectoral spatia or muscle. Uh, even in the relaxed condition, the uh, swelling was mobile, indicating that it is not fixed to the chest wall. Uh, nipple, there was no nipple discharge. Uh, examination of right axilla, no nodes were palpable in the axilla, left breast and axilla was normal, uh, left nipple and circumstantial nipple, nipple retraction was present in the left breast also, uh, bilateral supraclavicular fossa was normal. On percussion over the parasternal region, uh, resonant note, uh, there was no dullness uh, noted. In system examination, uh, uh, CVS examination was normal. RS and parabdomen uh, uh, examinations were normal. In parabdomen example, a lower midline scar was noted uh, and the scar was healthy. In CNS, there is no focal neurologic deficit and uh, spine, there is no paraspinal tenderness. Uh, to uh, summarize, uh, a, a 15 year old postmenopausal woman with complaints of painless lump in the right breast for past two months, the no history of nipple discharge and retraction or no metastatic symptoms. On examination, a 3 cross 2 centimeter heart lump with irregular surface was felt in the right lower inner quadrant that moves along with the breast tissue with the skin environment and no palpable axillary nodes. Uh, my diagnosis clinically is a uh, carcinoma of the right breast in a post monopausal one, clinically T4B, N0 and MX, belonging to the clinical stage 3B, locally advanced breast carcinoma. The summary, uh, sir. In in your examination findings in palpation, you have mentioned pectoral yes, fascia and pectoral is muscle. You have mentioned about that. Is there any way where you can differentiate fixity to the fascia and the muscle? Uh, no, no, sir. Uh, no. Fascia and muscle, we cannot differentiate. And then there is no point in mentioning about that. You can say that state yes, away. Lump is not tethered to the pectoral muscle state away. Right? Because there are no yes, way we can differentiate whether it is fixed to the fascia or the muscle. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
does it take it into consideration for the staging the pectoral muscle fibrosis? no sir it's not it's not considered to staging sir then why why this particular test is uh, given much importance for that uh, sir, it is also uh, crucial no in every examination yes, of the breast lamp we are always mentioning it is not fixed to the pectoral muscle yes sir then why this if it is not taking into account for a staging purpose and what is the importance of this particular test then uh sir while planning management it is involved and go for yeah. new age one is yes. don't say is the tumor sir. not new age one no that no fixity to the pectoral is mother doesn't differentiate whether you go for adjuvant or a surgery first hmm? whenever okay. you are planning for a surgery no you need to say that you should get the negative margins by wide local excision of the involved pectoral is muscle that is the importance of doing this test hmm, involvement to the okay. pectoral muscle or not hmm, it doesn't add yes. on to the stage it doesn't doesn't give a guidelines to whether to go for adjuvant therapy or the surgery hmm? sure okay sabri in your inspection point you have mentioned the it is slightly higher but obviously looking at your uh, mark there is obvious the size is asymmetry there is lot of changes are there why do you want to use just slightly it is in the upper level as far as possible in the clinical examination don't use this word slightly little yes sir because it is matter not and this is yes, asymmetry or uh, structural the size abnormality is the first sign which you will be getting in any, any mass there will be either yes, fullness will be there some abnormality with the comparing the size shape will be there uh, just mentioning only that it is slightly higher is not appropriate you should have mentioned it's asymmetry obviously it is there in this case yes sir okay sir So when, the, not... when you notice the under inspection, it is a, a higher level than the uh, normal one. Uh, uh, what what it indicates? So uh, it indicates the, uh, the involvement of the ligaments of Cooper, sir. Okay. Then is there any need to do the uh, make the patient to bend forwards and look for? Does it falls forwards or not? so if it's a uh, uh, fixed to the uh, pectoralis muscle itself or chest wall uh, the falling forward will be a the fixed to the chest wall and muscle fibers also causes the raising of the nipple from the normal level yes. it will be always at the higher level no always at the higher level than the normal way yes sir it gives an important information that uh, it, it will be fixed to the chest wall also then the yes. pectoral is muscle also that's why it is not falling forwards so that also explains there is a reason for upward displacement of the breast region yes for case there is a one breast is having a mass another breast is not having a mass it is slightly pendulous you will not be able to measure how much it is falling forward you will only see whether there is a falling forward so don't use the word equally falling forward equal we yes, cannot measure you can never say that is it is equally falling forward or you are not going to do that and it is better you just say that the falling forward is seen or falling forward is uh, observed or uh, don't to use that oh. you because you are not measuring some of the examiners may even after you say in the inspection the nipple is at the higher level in the palpation you need to measure the nipple how do you measure the nipple on the both the side sir uh, from the clavicle in the clavicle clavicle and from the mid part of the sternum both you must measure on separate side to establish there is a man. but your case this is very obvious now how will you explain there is a circumferential yes, uh, refraction in the opposite limb in the polar side sir it, uh, it was uh, the, in both the breast uh, is it a sir, uh, in both breast then is it a recent onset sir, or it is there for a long time sir it was there for a long time sir when probed the patient said it was there for a long time sir so like what chennai sir said recent back ache and here also the retraction you should mention as a recent recent dump. so if it is there for okay. a long time it is not significant at this moment not we mean that is very yes. other patients could be there yes sir it was there for a long time sir. what is the importance of a normal position nipple neural complex is in normal position sir it means that the uh, lactiferous ducts were not involved yes um, what is the normal direction of the nipple nipple sir it was uh, outwards and slightly downwards that's all the 
downwards, forwards. So you must be exactly knowing that even if there is a slight change in that uh, direction in which it is moving, it is part of the early retraction. It is not this, uh, when you say circumferential retraction, it is relatively an advanced condition. And in your case, you have mentioned it is a studio orange, but uh, you are not demonstrated that in the picture or because you are it's a small nodule case, that's three into two centimeter, no node. And how do you explain the beauty orange? Sir, uh, the skin was not pinchable, sir. Uh, the, the pinchable test is need not be done in a breast. It's a gliding test. Yes, sir. Whether you have to accept, please. No, the, yes. no, no need to go for pinch the breast. Yes. The pinchability is not the sign of uh, beauty orange. Yes, sir. QD orange is uh, by uh, inspection, sir, or we can elicit by uh, pressing over the. So, have, are you seen able to see that QD orange appearance here? That means. Yeah, yes, sir. I was able to see, sir, but I cannot capture in the photo very clearly, sir. No, no, just because you must be a little more careful in saying that because don't show the picture. There's no need because so yes, sir. The will not allow this to happen. So you need to very cautiously yes, put in a diagnosis because that will totally change your staging. Now, yes, sir. Yes, sir. The three into two centimeter mass, there is N zero. Now you are just because you are saying it is a beauty orange, you are going to make it as an LAVC. Let's see. Let uh, yes, sir. T for this. So why do you get beauty orange? Yes, sir. Sir, it is a blockage of subdermal lymphatics that to give the beauty orange appearance. So is it a skin involvement or not? Yes, sir. It is a skin involvement, sir. So, how it is skin is involved? Lymphatic is uh, in the, the tumor symbol will be in the lymphatic. Yes, sir. It's not skin involvement. It must permeate to the skin. In the video, I that the one part, the edema is due to the lymphatic obstruction. But the skin involvement is because of the permeation of the, because there is obstruction, it also permeates out and it infiltrates into the skin. Why among these two, among these two, among these two, which is the more clinically advanced stage wise? PD orange versus tethering. Both are some uh, form of skin involvement. Sir, PD orange is, uh, uh, is important in staging, sir. Beauty orange or tethering is important? Sir, beauty orange is important. Which is clinically advanced stage among these two? Sir, beauty orange is clinically advanced, sir. Just it signifies skin involvement and it goes for T4B. No, no, it is, it is other way. It is a thin skin involvement tethering. What is the mechanism for tethering? Sir, uh, involvement of ligaments of Cooper will cause tethering of the Skin, sir. Okay. You just indraw the indraw the skin. Okay. What indraw the skin, skin? Yes. skin fixity. Skin fixity is uh, the skin is uh, directly fixed over the uh, tumor, sir. We cannot uh, slide uh, the tumor and the skin separately, sir. Or you can you're not able to pinch the skin over the lesion. Pinch. Skin. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Come, uh, come among these two, PD orange versus skin fixity, which is more advanced clinically. Skin fixity. Yeah, skin fixity is clinically more advanced compared to the PD orange. orange. PD is only lymphatics involvement. Derma may be, may be free. Uh, in between the two follicles, uh, follicles of hair follicles, the skin becomes more prominent. That gives an important appearance of a PD orange. Whereas in skin fixity, uh, yes, there is direct infiltration of the skin by the lesion. So uh, clinically, yes, the uh, skin involvement is more advanced as compared to the uh, PD orange. Yes, sir. What is the peculiarity of the cutaneous lymphatics there? Skin in yes. lymphatics in the breast. Where do you get cancer in cuirassi? Sir, multiple satellite nodules are uh, fixed over the... Uh, nodules here and there, instead of your diffuse involvement. Yes, sir. Any reason? Yes, sir. Because most of the time, the cutaneous lymphatics here is a segmental lymphatics. It do not interconnect with the other segments. That is why when you are... They don't... They don't... They don't drain into the systemic lymphatics, so they have a localized systemic involvement. That's why they produce the cutaneous like nodules. Yes. Yes, sir. Ulceration, ulceration uh, 
pudi ulceration pudi orange and uh, uh, that um, what is that the satellite 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 nodules they yes, all uh, come under t4b so t4b yes, b, b so a yes, is sir, a, b, a is uh, you know chest wall so chest wall sir but uh, here uh, mastitis carcinomatosa should be separate that is uh, not included in this definition of uh, uh, what you said just now all that uh, skin yes, and uh, nodule i have one small comment to make that uh, um, mx uh, is better to be avoided nowadays because i know in your case you have not probably not done pet scan and other things you know that yes, whatever usually m0 m0 means no metastasis okay yes, so yes sir and nowadays the not to do mx suppose in which clinical scenario when you can use mx can you tell me not exactly in your patient but when when you have no idea okay not to waste the time somebody has undergone a whatever wide local whatever some and histopathology is not available you understand that is yes, the sir, situation you use m0 means usually where you have done all the investigations and no metastasis detected that's how it is yes, sir. is it after the work up no it is all is it after yes. the work up because yes. mx nowadays there is a, they don't prefer sir. better to avoid it some examiners so when you when you, when, sir, when you make the clinical examination on that ground will say that there are no no metastatic signs we can then, yes. then 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 what do you call it then then tab mx you know still not used sir nowadays in the that tnm yes, really that mx is not there sir that just for uh, okay Okay. You are M zero or M zero, which based yes. on that clinical. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, sir. Percussion, you get a resonant note. Where you percuss? Sir, uh, along the parasternal region, sir. Second, third, and fourth, and intercostal spaces. So again, I would like to mention here when we were, I think, uh, post graduates, and I think Dr. Hasmani Jailal all will agree. I think Dr. Lakshman Prasad, I am seeing uh, senior, more senior. this percussion over this intercostal space issue was not there number one this has come because uh, you do a ct scan then you find these nodes they are included under the staging now so because of that people have now started percussing but i really don't know sir whether you can really pick up those enlarged nodes and in your patient there is a tumor is in the medial quadrant correct inner medial yes, lower inner lower inner quadrant <laughs> uh, lower lower inner so Uh, maybe you can percuss or not percuss i leave it to the probably the examiner in inner, inner quadrant there is a mass he says then how did you made out a resonant on that region that's what i wanted to know from him <laughs> so that's how it is yes okay then what is the importance of lower inner quadrant tumor sir so, uh, lower inner uh, inner quadrant tumors usually uh, will have a highest propensity to metastasis to the contralateral side and in a lower inter lower uh, inner quadrant tumor it might present uh, metastasis to liver more easily by which spread uh, by both uh, lymphatic and lymphatic spread and uh, hematogenous spread sir. more of lymphatic only when you particularly ask this question importance of lower inner quadrant you are supposed to mention about only a direct lymphatic lymphatic. go to the liver then don't bring the issue of hematogenous here uh, it is a okay. local spread what is the mechanism of local spread uh, sir the, by the lymphatics over rectus uh, yes yes yeah uh, there will be communication of the lymphatic places of the rectus sheath rectus sheath into the peritone peritoneal lymphatics through the falciform ligament it can go to the liver hmm? lower yes. inner quadrant tumor the higher tendency yes, similarly yes. upper outer quadrant what is the importance of upper outer quadrant lesion Sir, upper outer quadrant that uh, axillary metastasis, nodal metastasis yes. is quicker. Sir. Yes, yes, yes. It can be uh, uh, extend along the uh, tail of the breast, and as well mm -hmm. as the early involvement of the lymphatics. Yes. Sir. In this case, uh, though the skin involvement is so much involved, almost T four B. How do you explain for it? Is M zero? There might uh, the because it is located in the. Uh, inner quadrant and yeah. uh, clinically you can give the reason that since it is a lower inner quadrant probably propensity of involvement of the axillary nodes is is, is less it doesn't yes. say that it do not involve less we can say less than okay. 
So what is your clinical diagnosis of in this case? Sir, uh, yeah. Trauma. Sir, it's a carcinoma of breast uh, of the right, carcinoma of right breast uh, in the postmenopausal woman. Clinically, T4B, N0 and M0, sir. Staging 3Bs. A locally advanced CM breast. So, you are... Ah, you, are, you are putting it as a locally advanced breast carcinoma. Okay. Yes. What is metastatic breast carcinoma? What stage you would like to put it? Sir, uh, stage 4 is metastatic. Yes, exactly. You are right. For stage 4, you put for the metastatic breast Metastatic breast carcinoma. Okay. So, with all this history and clinical examination, is a more clinical evident that it is a carcinoma breast only. Oh, okay, so he's a 55 year, 59 year old lady with the T4B. Okay. Uh, yes. How do you work up this case? Sir, I will proceed with the uh, investigation, sir. Uh, by triple assessment, it oh, will be clinical. Uh, uh, important. Uh, 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 yes. What it clinical, uh, radiological, and histopathological uh, investigation, sir. Uh, first to confirm the diagnosis, uh, then to stage and to plan by treatment, sir. I will do these investigations, sir. Okay. What are the radiological investigations you would like to have in this case? Sir, I will do a, a mammogram of a bi bilateral mammogram of the breast, sir. What are the, what are the local problems in this case to get the mammograph done? It is a lower inner quadrant tumor, almost skin is puckered. Then how are you going to assess with mammography in this case? It is uh, difficult to do. Actually. Is it the better mode of mammography in this case? Tomosynthesis, your head. I know, sir. I can you hear? Can you hear me? Uh, yes, sir. I can hear you, sir. Doctor Sabri. Yes, sir. Sir, I'm audible, sir. Sorry. Sir, I'm audible, sir. Yes, you are audible, Sabri. Yes, sir. Bet better way of doing mammography, sir, is asking. That is because this case is the medial side. There is a uh, yes, skin is fucked or uh, video arrows. What view is better for medial uh, uh, scene evaluation? The mammography from me, uh, craniocardial view. Okay, craniocardial will be always showing more of the medial side. Yes, sir. Without seeing here, the difficulty will be compression and putting it there. So, there yes, the sir. option is the tomosynthesis, so where you can go with the mammography 3D mammography, it will be much more easier. You can the data digitally, you can uh, manipulate the data. Yeah, so ideally, di digital mammography is more ideal in this case, no? Yes, sir. What is the blind spot in mammography? Uh, Any sir, uh, what is the blind lower spot? outer corner. No. It is always the nipple lid. The mass behind the nipple. Nipple lid. Posterior to yes. the nipple area, you will not be able to visualize the changes in the mammal mammography. So when you have a 3D or uh, tumor synthesis, digital, we overcome that. What is the purpose oh, of okay. doing mammography? You said for the both the breasts. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, up to assess multicentricity and to examine the contralateral breast and the axilla for any. So what is multicentricity? Uh, sir, uh, involvement of in presence in more than uh, one quadrant, sir. Oh, how will you assess more the quadrant? I mean, right breast, how will you assess the quadrant? Sir, uh, how will you make can... the quadrant line passing through? Sir, uh, the vertical is the quadrant is before you are breast the nipple is getting retracted or after the nipple is getting retracted. Uh, so before the nipple is getting retracted. So how do you know now which was where was the nipple at that time? I, I think I will go for a, it is within four centimeter. I will take it as a so that is another centimeter. Uh, the safer side is to make within the four centimeter. It is multi centricity. Yes. More than four centimeter is multi focality. Because now the yes. nipple, when the nipple is much retracted, the quadrant yes. you are measuring now is not the original quadrant. 
Yes, sir. So the original conference is only that the, when the tumor is developing. That is before 30 cycles. That is what we are going to talk about the tumor development. Yes, sir. So one is for the multicentricity, multifocality. What is the other purpose of doing a... Sir, to examine, to examine the contralateral breast. The same breast. The same breast. What is the other important? So then multicentricity, multifocality. What are the other views? What are the other areas? Why do you want to do the even uh, mammography for the same breast and opposite breast? Sir, in uh, medial lateral object, we'll uh, look for the axilla also, sir. I'll examine the axilla also. Sir, you will be able to no. see axilla also. Yes, sir. Anything else? You'll be able to... Why not just an ultrasonogram? If, if, uh, if you... Opposite, why not just an ultrasonogram? Uh, sorry, uh, usually, uh, the, uh, more than 50% uh, of uh, the cases, uh, the mammography will pick up a lesion much earlier than it becomes uh, palpable, sir. So, yes, in mammography... Which is just 5.5 millimeters. Yes, can be picked up by the mammogram. It cannot be picked up yes, by sir. the ultrasonogram. The third important is volumetric assessment. So suppose you are planning for a chemotherapy where you do not have a facility for an MRI volumetric assessment. Even the mammographic volumetric assessment is good enough when you want to decide about the response of the tumor to the chemotherapy when you are using. So earlier, yes. uh, this, uh, mammography also helps. If you, have a prior, if you have prior films of mammography before the adjuvant therapy, then you can compare with the after the chemotherapy, you can assess the response to therapy. Sir, which is the best mode yes, to sir. assess the response to therapy then? Sir, what? Which is the best mm -hmm. modality to assess the response to your new adjuvant chemotherapy? Sir, um, usually we do uh, mammogram and the clinical examination, sir. No, that is also okay. Any, anything other than that? Sir, I am MRI is the better, better option to, to assess the... Yes. What are other added advantages of an MRI apart from this one? Um, one thing you already showed that response to assess the chemotherapy is the one modality. Is there any other yes, most sir. important uh, advantage of an MRI in the breast uh, uh, carcinoma? Yes, in the, if the patient has a previous system, implants, MRI is used. And if there is any recurrence or then uh, uh, the yes. assessment will be no, better with the MRI. Okay. In, in the very early stage, uh, to differentiate whether it is a scar lesion or whether it is a recurrence yeah. disease, yeah. that yeah. can be made out. Or if the patient has got prosthetic implants also, they will differentiate yes. the yeah. tissue reaction from the early recurrence. Yes. What is the uh, MRI uh, diagnostic science of breast carcinoma? How to say, how to depict that malignancy? Is it done with contrast or without contrast? Sir, it is uh, done with contrast, sir. By using breast what coils. The, uh, breast coils, and then yes. you see the consistent uh, 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 diagnostic finding that it shows that it is carcinoma. That's the phases. What are the phases? We should say it's malignancy. Phases. Phases. Rapid inflow and rapid washout is the consistent uh, sign of a malignancy if you use the MRI as a tool for a breast cancer. Yes, oh. Part 2 will be for a any, any specificity you have been uh, particular risk you take before taking as uh, MRI? Sir, uh, I, I can get it. Any precautions or uh, what any other uh, adjective measures you use for doing MRI or you just send the patient for routine MRI? Is that MRI of the breast is taken with a special precaution? Uh, the, we are administering the contrast as well. No, no, not the contrast. We must use always a breast coil. Breast coil. Yes. To eat something. Each uh, thing when you are doing it, when you are taking an MRI for the penis, you need to take some precautionary measures. So when you are taking the breast, you must be knowing about the breast coil. Breast coils. Breast okay. coil you are taking, do not get the, the picture. Okay. The, 
one one more indication for this mri is a very young woman where there is a mammography is relatively contraindicated Contra this is also one of the yes. indication for mri in the breast sure. where there the is a, because of the glandular component the young age mammography has got more uh, harmful as compared to this one there is those cases in mri also indicated yes sir Will you do PET scan? You have, you have an MRI images uh, or picture? Sir, or... sir no, I didn't take MRI for it. Okay, now your uh, MRI or your investigation, radiological investigation is more in favor of pregnancy. What is the next thing you will do? Sir, uh, next... Uh, Um, I go for uh, management, sir. Uh, true cut biopsy, sir. I go for a core needle biopsy, sir. To confirm my uh, diagnosis histologically. Why not FNAC? Sir, uh, uh, core needle biopsy. Uh, FNAC cannot differentiate between uh, uh, invasive and in-situ carcinoma, sir. A true cut will uh, give a uh, better uh, picture about the carcinoma, um, about the diagnosis. It will differentiate the invasive and the uh, uh, in-situ component. It will give us a molecular uh, 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 receptor status. We can uh, assess from that uh, true cut needle biopsy. Core no, no, needle biopsy. Status by FNAC. It is not only sir. immunohistochemistry. Now immunocytochemistry has also come. But you must be looking okay. at the quantification. The, uh, it will not be possible by the immunocytochemistry. You will be able to only diagnose that CRPR. Yes, what, is, what is the how do you say the receptor ERP are positive? When will you say ERP positive? Sir, uh, by presence of more than ten centimeters, uh, ten ten centimeters of the per gram of the, milligram of the breast. Are you doing ERP? Please don't use that bread now. Now nobody is doing by the ELISA technique ERP. You are not allowed. Yes. Sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Unit is H score. So it must be more than 15 H score. So first yes. of all, it's originally said it's almost about the same thing also used. But that is only okay. when you are doing you are doing that study. So you, this core needle, what core you will use? What this needle size will use? Sir, uh, 16 gauge needle, sir. 16 gauge needle I will use. I will send the specimen. What is the percentage sir, uh, of positivity in the postmenopausal, and what is the percentage of positivity in the premenopausal? ER status, ER ER status. Sir, in a uh, premenopausal woman, almost sixty-five percent positivity for ER status. In postmenopausal, nearly fifty percent is positive for ER status. Molecular uh, markers you will study. Sir, what are the postmenopausal women are uh, ERP are positive. Anything else? Only ERP. Yeah. Generally, more than sixty. Sir, HER2 sir, HER2 receptor I will see. Sir, HER2 receptor I will see. Any 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 role of K sixty seven? Sir, HER2 receptor I will see. 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 Sir, HER2 receptor It help us help in prognosis, sir. It indicates proliferation of the proliferation status of the tumor, sir. K sixty seven more than thirty uh, percent indicates its highly proliferative. Tumor. All the four is used because based on that only even the luminal A B class staging will be also different. There, yes, sir. You need to have the K one sixty seven also. You have to measure. Yes, sir. Sir, one question to you. You are a PG. Yes, you are asked to do a um, coronal biopsy. How do you know yes, that sir. you have got a biopsy specimen? Why not only the fat tissue? Sir, when when I put it in the solution, it is must it was, should not float, sir. It must sink. So yes, very good. You should know this point because these are the usually done by the PGs and they say that we yes, have sir. done biopsy and it comes as so fat yes, always sir. floats. Okay. Yes, sir. Flat always floats. Tissue comes down, settles down. Yes, sir. So that is yes, the important sir. point. At least, uh, at least four to five to six passes you need to do. You understand? Yes, Give a local anesthesia and do it. Okay. Yes. Okay. Sir. Go ahead. Thank you. Sir.
one more practical importance when you pass this needle no you will have some bleeding sensation if it is in the solid yes, of the tumor if it yes, is sir. if it yes, is in the fatty area you needle it, it suddenly goes in it doesn't have any resistance this is one of the when you keep on doing more number of core bleed that this sort of uh, uh, sensations you will get feedback yes, sir. the bleeding sensation the which you are passing the needle inside the lesion yes sir So, what would you like to do? Any other metastatic workup in this case? Sir, uh, since it is an NJBC, I will do a CT chest, the CT abdomen and the bones cancer to look for metastasis. What, what, what is what, what is your justification to go for metastatic workup? Though they are clinically negative. Sir, since it's it is a lower in the quadrant. How do you justify that? Sir, in a LA basis, around uh, when we do a complete metastatic workup, in around thirty percent cases, we will find a metastasis in the patient, sir. So, I will do a metastatic workup exactly. here. Yes, exactly the right. And one more is it is the T four. No, no, the T factor is also important. If it is yes, suppose sir. the same lesions in the T three or T two, probably it may not be necessary. Higher the T lesions, yes. so there is the chance, even though clinically the negative. Mm. In those cases, metastatic workup has to be done, and as you said, 30 percent, more than 30 percent, there could be chances. So it's better to do yes, the sir. metastatic workup in this case. Yes, sir. There is a role of sentinel node biopsy. Sir, uh, I will do a sentinel node biopsy, yes, sir. Because since it's a node negative axilla, I will go for sentinel node biopsy. So when you have a UDR and the mass, and where you are going to inject the type? Uh, sir, I will uh, inject in the periolar region and the peritoneum. You already said there is a lymphatic block, cutaneous. Yes, sir. That is blocked. And there is a lymphatic block. No, if you inject the dye, it may not go because it is already blocked by the lymphatic. Blocked, yes. Sir has put a very good question. No? <laughs> Practical question. Yeah. What, what, what are the what, what what are the common sites when you when you are planning to inject this dye? So in the periorial region or in the peritumoral yes. region or skin yes. over the tumor, I will just okay. These are the common sites you plan for that. That is asking when there is PD orange is there, then where you would like to inject yes. this dye? Is there any role to intralesional injection of this dye? Hello, uh, we can do intralesional injection. Yeah, what you? I think uh, you uh, probably have to say that I will do the ultrasound of the axilla after mm -hmm. the mammogram can tell if the node is there. Guided FNLC can be done. Number one. It is yes, clinically sir. early stages, clinically impalpable axilla. You have a definite uh, role for this sentinel. Sir, is it a LABC? Uh, is it uh, indicated, sir? Just want to clarifications. In uh, no LABC when the node is clinically not palpable. Mm -hmm. Clinically palpable in your case? No. Sure. Shabari? Sir, it was not clinically palpable in my case. Ultrasound of the axilla you have to do. Hmm? To yes, sir. Sure. If after the mammogram, if the if you still have a doubt, guided FNC can be done. But uh, does yes, it sir. happen? Okay. Go ahead. If you have done a sentinel node, if it comes as a, a negative, it still zero. Would you don't want to dissect the axilla in this case? Mm -hmm. Sir, uh, since it is a There, there, there are clear that look, if it comes as a positive, it gives the indication to go ahead with the axillary dissection. Yes, sir. Now, if it comes as a zero, in spite of the sentinel node assessment, it has no node is picked up with a metastasis. Does it give the indication that you are not supposed to dissect the axilla in this case? Sir, I uh, will look for tumor grade in the coronary biopsy, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you already done the tumor needle biopsy. You have, yeah, yeah. You have all the details already in your hand. ERPR yes, status and the grade of the tumor, 
all this are that also decides whether to do or to agila or no okay yes, it all depends upon the multiple two t factors t factors yes, so already assessed by this time so that will give you indication to go ahead with that whether to go with agila dissection or not then though it is m0 because of the t lesion when you mentioned that there more than 30% there could be chance of metastasis so same thing is hold true there could be more than 30 to 40% of lymphomas being involved even though it is clinically okay. negative agila negative yes, sir high high chances high chances high chances high, high chances chance. chance. here um, just one one question to you that uh, yes sir you have, you are planning for a surgery first or you are planning for a new adjuvant chemotherapy sir i'm planning for a neo adjuvant first this case so metastatic workup first neo adjuvant for our surgeries has been done in your patient do you have some at least some reports or something to coordinate uh, yes bias. sir i we, have, we did the metas we did what is metastatic the, workup sir the coordinate what is the bi biopsy report do you have the report what is the sir it's uh, uh, non specific what is it sir it's a uh, differentiated well moderately differentiated ca with uh, uh, non specific type sir it's a non specific type thing oh ls and we did a uh, axillary node usg sir in the axillary node uh, for usg for axilla it revealed two nodes actually sir that's what i said uh, so around 1 cm both are yes sir ultrasound is a good for that axilla hmm? and yes, So, so it is a also modern guided definition can be also done yes so guided yes. definition yes now you said uh, grading uh, what uh, what is the grading followed uh, usually nowadays they may ask you this question uh, nottingham uh, grading by what are changes. the no, what are not, the nottingham, nottingham. is only a prognostic that is a prognostic index but that is comes after when you have to your surgery you are doing sir the great great uh, bloom and richards bloom sir bloom and richardson yes sir yeah. bloom so, richardson is based on a nuclear pleomorphism uh, mitosis and uh, tubule formation tubular formation oh. yes tubule formation so what other uh, tests uh, you have done so biopsy uh, true cut is uh, core needle is uh, moderately differentiated carcinoma clinically notes are uh, not there but ultrasound is told so rest Rest of yes, the sir. rest of the investigations report. Sir, rest of the metastatic investigations uh, were uh, were uh, not sir. In the USG reference, we did for the but uh, the NIC in patients. Then uh, we can't hear you properly. Uh, uh sir uh, the fnac use get the fnac for that notes we picked up on use this sir in this patient uh, in fnac we could not pick it it doesn't matter in this patient because what is your uh, plan now yes sir so we go for neo uh, chemotherapy yes you can uh, you said already sir, i will go for uh, neo joint okay go ahead go ahead please neo joint Neo adjuvant chemotherapy, and I will assess the response, and, and I will go for a surgery followed neo adjuvant chemotherapy. How, how many uh, cycles you are going to give? Neo adjuvant chemotherapy for how many cycles? Uh, three cycles prior surgery, sir. Why do you want to give in cycle? Why don't you give in a single stage? Sir, uh, because of the toxicity. No, three times giving okay. is more toxic than giving Each one time. time. No? When you want to give for three times, uh, the tumor cells toxicity. should be at the different stage. Of... Very good. Different stage of the tumor cells will be at the different stage of uh, differentiation, uh, replication. So, so chemotherapy works on which stage? Three cycle measure. Sure. Chemotherapy drugs normally acts on what stage of the cycle? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, this not be sir. when it is a growing yes, yes. aortic or and the growing stage so that is to expose the all the cells at least once to the chemotherapy drug you need to minimum yes, give yes, three cycles so three to four cycles an ideal yes sir what, what surgery you are planning what surgery you are planning in this case uh, the, the when you are starting the 
do you urgent chemotherapy uh, do you yes, have in your mind that what sort of surgery you are going to do sir i will prefer uh, mrm in this patient modified radical mastectomy so you are not planning for breast yes, surgery surgery in this case what is the reason why you are not planning for breast surgery in this case what yes, is the sir. contraindication in this case hmm inka saapan vendi em nadalla sir ama in city sir advanced risk carcinoma then uh, more risk of recurrence advanced you got to is it by bbc no no it is according to according to your clinical diagnosis stage 3b is not a contraindication somebody in the name may not see that mic is on please wire gamman unda wire gamman ne apni rendu oda doctor may not see please please close your mic yeah. thank you sir mute panni thanks sir i have muted it no problem What is the sandwich therapy? What What is sandwich therapy? Uh, Sabri, have you heard about sandwich sir. therapy? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, sandwich, is, uh, sandwich, sandwich. Giving, yes, sir. Uh, it is giving uh, chemo ready chemotherapy uh, three cycles and followed by surgery. Then again, uh, completion of chemotherapy. Sandwich. Therapy. Then what is the difference of neoadjuvant chemotherapy? Uh, sir, neoadjuvant chemotherapy. We will assess for the. response yeah in a responder in a responder case if we give the cycles continuously no other day you plan for four cycles or six cycles there is a true definition of a new adjuvant chemotherapy provided the patient comes under the responders category okay so if you are uh, planning for three cycles and doing surgery and then continuing chemotherapy it is rightly called as a sandwich therapy sandwich therapy your your sandwich the surgery in between the two cycles in between the two periods of cycles so was in case if the patient is totally responded you have given a full cycle of chemotherapy then how to assess that how where to excise the lesion then sir uh, yes we need to want this tumor to the new adjuvant sir uh, after that i will again assess it for uh, by mammography and clinical examination sir so i am planning for breast conservation i will go for an mri it will be more suitable in this uh, is the, same is planning for breast cancer because you are operating on a patient you can't operate on a mri you can't operate on a mammography picture what yes, what sir. what planning you are doing on a patient that is more important this image should tell you that whether this patient is responded to therapy or not suppose the patient is responded very well you are not able to palpate the lesion then how where are you yes, going sir. to excise the uh, you have to pre uh, mark the tumor prior to uh, new adjuvant and i will uh, yeah uh, whenever you are planning for uh, whenever you are planning for a breast conservative surgery one need to do a tumor tattooing or the needle wiring marker. so yeah uh, uh, needle markers along the margins of the lesion so that will give a better estimation otherwise uh, uh, it is always difficult to what to excise and what not to excise okay hmm. these images yes, will sir. tell you the response the response to therapy but you are ultimately you are placing incision on a patient not on images hmm? yes sir what are the important uh, uh, on table uh, uh, things you are supposed to do when you are planning for breast conservative surgery ah uh. sorry i have a precaution yes sorry i'm about to sentinel node before the excision of tumor sir what is the minimum margin horizontal and vertical one thing what is the line of incision is the second most important surgical techniques is another important can you enumerate what are the local uh, guidelines or precautions one can take when you are planning for breast conservative surgery I, uh, preferably go for moment. elliptical incision yes. one thing one thing but 1 cm margin is uh, yes, uh, ideally necessary and then absolute hemostasis has to be yes. taken care of it cavity is not supposed to close yes, and then one should not keep it drained ah yes sir we should 
and then histological specimen it has to be radiographed the margin should be radiographed so these are the, uh, the precautions you have to take when you are planning for the the breast cancer yes sir can you hear sir is it one hour over can we wind up this case sir yes sir we are almost finishing up sir uh, we will give the candidate to uh, ask some questions if he wants abhi uh, do you have any questions to ask ma uh Mm, no sir no questions okay but only thing you, uh, suppose it comes as a metastatic cause now you find out some metastasis so yes, is sir. there is any change in your uh, treatment schedule no sir i uh still you a treatment came up you will start for a metastatic breast carcinoma is a chemotherapy is better or hormone therapy is better sir it it is uh, decided by the uh, coronal uh, exam sir uh, oh, ERPR marker, positive uh, receptor status of the coronal basis yeah ERPR uh, positive i will uh, give the hormonal therapy concurrently sir you cannot give concurrently ERPR hormonal therapy. hormonal therapy cannot be given concurrently So the yes, metastatic carcinoma, if there is no visceral crisis, if there is no advanced liver disease or acute disease, the first line of treatment is only hormonal therapy. Only when uh, there is a visceral crisis, you are supposed to give a chemotherapy. So most of the time, uh, all the PGs they are you are very well with the LABC. When it comes to the metastatic carcinoma, uh, please read it, and uh, you must also read what is the treatment. or the guidelines which is saying for the triple negative cancer and how you are going to give and advancements which is happening with the new with the parp inhibitor or pdl inhibitors all that also in a few lines when you are doing very well the questions will be also focused on that and you need to answer them not probably not for passing but for scoring yes. higher marks that you should be updated your knowledge on the metastatic breast carcinoma and on so the newer drug genetic new drug, immunotherapy then vaccination all these things are now comes as a recent advance which is but very good one, presentation one more, very good one, one more one more important thing uh, uh, when you are deciding the hormonal factor is main therapy when the patient is 70 years and age and above where there is a hormone yes, favorable prognosis like erpr positive her2 negative and low probability index even though patient is uh, uh, 70 years old and above probably chemotherapy can be avoided these patients can be only treated with uh, uh, hormonal therapy hormonal therapy here the age is taken is one of the criteria provided she comes under the all favorable factors like erpr positive and her2 negative yes sir where you can have a chemotherapy is an optional hmm? in such cases yes you can manipulate these patients with hormonal therapy okay nice presentation yes. uh, sabri uh, uh, thank you sir come over all up and up with the permission of the faculty we call this a close uh, sabri thank you very much for joining a uh, kind uh, you, respects to madam mani selvi and your assistant professors palya ma'am and others paladevi uh, madam stay with us uh, we have uh, dr gautam joining yes, us gautam please start your presentation gautam yes sir thank you are you able to share ma yes sir Virapa sir is there? Yes, Abari, you may need to help him. I think Mike he has some challenges. I'm there, Ishwar. Yeah, yeah. Sir, you are. You are. You have to take off now. <laughs> Professor Lakshman Prasad sir is there. Hello, Virapa. Sir, Hello, Professor Lakshman sir. Good evening, sir. Thank you so much. How are you, Virapa? Fine, sir. Good evening, sir. Can I make it full screen, uh, Gautam? Uh, 
sir hello hello i am yes, adam sir yes ma please go ahead good luck uh, uh, good evening sir my, my name is dr gautam i am a surgery resident in department of general surgery uh, under dr manish elvi ma'am uh, and uh, my co guides are uh, dr manivanan polya devi and dr pudma sir uh, a 46 years old gentleman who is a daily labeler by occupation hailing from madavakam of low socio economic status and hindu by religion Amy Chief Chief Complaint of Yellow Discoloration of Eyes and Urine for last two months. Patient was apparently normal two months back, following which he developed Yellow Discoloration of Eyes and Urine, which was insidious in onset and intermittent in nature, and noticed by himself. History of severe itching all over the body, more during nights, and now reduced in severity for the last few two weeks. History of passing pale colored stools for last two months, which is intermittent with few days passing normal yellow colored stools on and off, on and off in nature. exact duration is unknown to the patient history of melena present one week uh, two weeks back history of fever present one month back low grade intermittent fever which is associated with pins and rises history of loss of appetite present history of loss of weight of about 10 kg in a span of two months no history of abdominal pain which is radiate into the back no history of post prandial fullness no history of constipation or loose stools or steatorrhea no history of vomiting and hematemesis no history of Cough with hemoptysis, no history of abdominal distension, no history of diplopia or seizures or backache or any bone pains. Past history, no history of similar complaints in the past. Not a known case of type two diabetes, systemic hypertension, bronchial asthma, pulmonary coughs, ep- epilepsy and coronary artery disease. No history of surgeries in the past. No history of native medication for jaundice. No history of transfusion history or uh, drug chronic drugs. Personal history: patient is moderately built and nourished, normal sleep and appetite, consumed mixed diet. Normal bowel and bladder habit. A known case of alcoholic for about ten years and stopped four months back. Family history: no history of family, no history of similar complaints of jaundice in family members. Summary: a forty-six years old gentleman who is a chronic alcoholic came to OP with complaints of intermittent painless yellow discoloration of eyes and urine with passing of pale color stool and occasional melena. Patient has loss of appetite with significant weight loss. Yeah, Gautam uh, can you? go back to the first slide yes sir yes sir yeah uh, you uh, have yeah, next slide please why why the, the hindu by religion does it have any uh, binding on the diagnosis or only hindu still develop jaundice <laughs> no sir uh, why did you mention that it's not necessary there is no need to no, mention no. that Okay, sir. I'll correct you. Sorry, sir. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. Don't say sorry. It's okay. And can you please explain? He said two months back he was all right, and he has an illness, discoloration, probably in a jaundice. You have specifically mentioned it's an intermittent in nature, and uh, you also mentioned in between that he passed normal colored stool. Can you explain why did you ask all these questions? Sir, uh, because in uh, case of preamblary carcinoma, there is vaccine and uh, weaning of joint due to sloughing of the tumor, uh, which causes the temporary relief from the joint. How common it is? How common that uh, vaccine and weaning of joint is in preamblary, and how does it occur? Why does it occur? Uh, Why not? It doesn't occur in a stone disease. Sir. Sir, in stone disease there is a painful uh, intermittent jaundice. Okay, very good. Okay. So he doesn't have uh, pain. Yes, sir. Okay. You think it's an obstructive jaundice or it's in a medical jaundice? Sir, it's an obstructive jaundice. Why do you think so? Why do you think it's an obstructive jaundice? Why not it medical jaundice or hepatitis, something like that? So, uh, patient uh, passing pale colored stools means there is obstruction in the uh, of, uh, passage of bile from uh, biliary tube to the enteric system. Sir. So, what happens in uh, hepatitis? Severe hepatitis, acute hepatitis, cholestatic phase. So in cholestatic phase also there is obstruction present. So he may have uh, he may have uh, 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 pale colored stools. He may have an itching. 
So how does it uh, differ from the periampullary or whatever diagnosis you are thinking? Uh, sir, in uh, hepatitis, in cholestatic phase, uh, uh, unconjugated bilirubin is elevated. elevated no, no, no. Clinical, the, clinical, oh, clinical, no. clinical, clinical, clinical. My question is clinical. Anything we can differentiate hepatitis from obstructive jaundice? Before jaundice, uh, sir, any uh, symptoms you will get? Gautam, this patient does not have any constitutional symptoms like fever, malaise, nausea, vomiting, and all kind of things that you usually see in hepatitis. You know? Yes, so that history is not there. So this patient okay. has waxing and waning of jaundice with an itching, clay colored stool. So you mentioned two months uh, history of uh, passing a, a pale colored stool that is a classical up and obstruct to jaundice. Okay. What is the significance of melina? Uh, because, because of the tumor sloughing out, there will be bleeding which causes uh, melina. Sir. Anything else you can think of melina in a, in, in a background of obstructive jaundice and in a patient who, had, who, who is taking an alcohol for a quite a long time? Sir, varices. Varices. Okay. Okay. What else? What else? Uh, it could be an ulcer, ulcer, yes it could be in an ulcer bleed ulcer yeah it could be in an ulcer bleed what else i am specifically mentioning uh, you also mentioned there is no history of abdominal pain which is radiating to the back thank you Red. Huh? sir Pardon? sorry sir you also mentioned that there is no history of abdominal pain <coughs> which is radiating to the back. Yes, sir. You have specifically mentioned that. Why did you mention that? Pan you are pancreatitis. pancreatitis. Yeah, chronic pancreatitis with... You need to, you need to explain why uh, chronic pancreatitis patients will have melina. What are the causes of GI bleed in chronic pancreatitis? Any idea? No, sir. Could be a pseudoaneurysm. Yes, sir. Have you heard of pseudoaneurysms? Yes, sir. Okay. Pseudoaneurysm could sometimes erode into the pancreatic duct and you may have melina also. I thought you mentioned noise of abdominal plane specifically. You mentioned which is not radiative, which is not radiating to the back. I mean, I expected this answer. Okay. And you also mentioned fever of one month ago with chills and rigors. So why do you think he has any uh, chills and rigors? Yeah, because of obstruction patient uh, develops uh, uh, cholangitis. Okay. Cholangitis, yes. But that's not the primary presentation of Malignancy, if you are thinking. The cholangitis is a feature of a stone disease, not a malignancy, unless instrumentation is done. Okay. I mean, if endoscopic procedure has been done, the stenting has been done, and these patients will present with a, a cholangitis. Okay. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Gautam, in this uh, previous slide, you have put us a uh, starting with nothing to do with uh, where you become said that it's a socio low socioeconomic status patient. How do you come to that conclusion? Uh, sir, uh, mod modified Kupuswami grading. Sir. So what, is the, what is the grade that will put us a low socioeconomic? What score you will put us a low socioeconomic? How many scores you have in uh, modified Kupuswami? Six, sir. Six? It is a grade. Score is different. So be careful when you are using these terms. You must be very specifically why you are want to use. And another question under you is within two months, do you expect a vaccine and waning to take place in a periambulary carcinoma? How much time it takes for the carcinoma that the periambulary growth to reappear and produce the reobstruction? 
is do you think it is instantly two days there is a normal stool next two days there is sub normal stool no sir and what is the how much time you get the clearance of the bilirubin to take place in the blood what is the half life of bilirubin half life of bilirubin is very minimal it is 5 to 6 minutes but it is always bind with albumin when it is albumin has a long half life so minimum it takes 2 weeks and the growth to take place also it takes long time so it is very un i mean uh, uncommon for to have within 2 months you have a multiple vaccine and vein to take place in a periambulary carcinoma and there is periambulary carcinoma vaccine and vein is not the common feature it is a very okay. less amount of periambulary carcinoma only will have the don't just go ahead with that textbook description and say that vaccine and waiting and there is a jaundice present you must when you are presenting for two months little more careful you have to ask the history and to go ahead with that okay yeah next slide why all this diplopia seizures no cough hemoptysis does it have any relevance with an obstructive jaundice no bleeding gums easy bruising uh, sir uh, uh, because of, of uh, hello for the sake of mentioning or you have any significance in this patient for the uh, sake sir, of uh, mentioning or do you have any significance sir because of uh, bile salts are not present uh, fat soluble vitamins are not absorbed sir uh, so it leads to bleeding gums and uh, bruising and uh, How many cases of bleeding gums you have seen uh, in a case of an obstructive jaundice? Easy bruising, bleeding from gums. Very low. Okay, fine. Do I history of steatorrhea? Sir, because of fat malabsorption uh, due to absence of bile salts. Okay. Do you think that um, uh, enzymes is not produced if there is an obstructive jaundice? Sorry, sir. Is it, is it due to is it due to deficiency of the enzymes of the pancreatic enzymes, uh, exocrine functions of the pancreas that causing the steatorrhea? That is the reason for steatorrhea. Yes, sir. Okay. What is your diagnosis, uh, Dr. Gautam? At this level, sir, uh, because of there is axonal veining type of pattern and uh, passing of uh, pale colored stools with occasional melina, I probably suspect a periambulary carcinoma regarding the old age and uh, weight loss and. Uh, it's not old. It's forty-six year old. It's not very old. What? It's not old. And periambulary carcinoma is not a old age carcinoma. Excuse me. So I don't. No term called uh, chronic alcoholic. Alcoholic is a disease. When you have a disease, it is there is nothing called the. Uh, you can have the chronic habit of taking alcohol. Once you diagnose it is an alcoholic, it is alcoholic. It is a dependent, physical dependent. We don't stress upon the term. It is a chronic alcoholic. Okay. Is there any other differential diagnosis you like to think? Apart from uh, apart from periampillary or ampullary, sir, distal cholangiocarcinoma, sir. Distal cholangiocarcinoma. So, how do you explain uh, uh, melina? How do you explain history of loss of weight and appetite? They yeah, usually the they I usually present the... early. Absolutely. So, ampullary, a periampillary malignancy. They will not have history of loss of weight and appetite. Is the carcinoma the head of the pancreas or body of the pancreas will have loss of weight and appetite? I will put the next slide. Okay. Why not? It's in a chronic pancreatitis with CBD stricture. Since patient is an alcoholic. Yes, sir. Why not? It's chronic pancreatitis. We have any explanation for that? Or no? Or yes? No. No. So why not? It's in ten percent of the patients. Patient may not have any uh, a pancreatic pain. They'll have an a chronic pancreatitis with an a as lower end of the CBD stricture, presenting with an obstructive jaundice. Okay. 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 Okay.
ஒரு <laughs> Now, just because I'm asking, that doesn't mean that you should give all these diagnoses. Why not? It can be an hepatocellular carcinoma. I think at this stage, Dr. Gautam, you need to keep all the differential diagnoses. I can explain one by one. It could be an a, a, a hepatocellular carcinoma in the background of probably an a, a cirrhosis because the patient is a chronic alcoholic, as you mentioned. and hcc with an obstructive jaundice theoretically it's possible because the tumor rupturing into the bile ducts and causing an obstructive jaundice of course that that the, the the combination is very rare you are rightly correct in diagnosing ampullary periampullary but also you should keep in mind chronic pancreatitis with cbd stricture and hcc with an obstructive jaundice okay you need to you need to keep open all these differential diagnoses Okay, let's go on to the examination. Anybody? Sir, like a, my, no, my that, that Bira Pan. Sir. Uh, that Gauta. Sir, uh, sir. Is it a is it a case of obstructive jaundice? Yes, sir. So, is surgical jaundice, obstructive jaundice, both are same or different? So, uh, surgical jaundice is different from uh, obstructive jaundice, sir, because uh, oh, okay. obstructive. Obstructive phase. Yes, please go ahead. Obstructive jaundice also can be seen in a polystatic phase of hepatitis. I'm not sure about that. Okay. Can you tell me the cause of obstructive jaundice and cause of surgical jaundice? So basically both are different, right? Yes, sir. So what are the cause of obstructive jaundice? You know, common condition is going to be obstructive jaundice. sir obstructive jaundice can be classified as a uh, obstruction which is prehepatic hepatic and post hepatic sir prehepatic prehepatic do you agree there apart what are the prehepatic causes of obstructive jaundice you are probably hinting at uh, 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 classification of jaundice ha ah. <laughs> gautam uh, sir post hepatic jaundice only hepatic and post hepatic jaundice okay, okay. so what right. hepatic causes uh, sir in hepatic causes uh, um, cholestatic phase of hepatitis and uh, uh, post pregnancy cholestasis post pregnancy post pregnancy cholestasis sir what is that sir post operative cholestasis and uh, Uh, pregnancy induced cholestasis okay okay let's move on to the examination okay sir so, uh, uh, general examination patient was examined after obtaining informed consent in a well lit room and with adequate exposure from nipple to mid thigh patient is conscious coherent and uh, cooperative well oriented to time place and person ecg score is 1 patient is moderately built with bmi 22 pulse rate uh, pulse rate is 92 beats per minute in right radial artery blood pressure was 130 by 80 mm of hg in right upper arm in supine position respiratory rate was 18 cycles per minute abdominal thoracic saturation is 98% under room air uh vitreous present in clear and bulbar conjunctiva no pallor no cyanosis no clubbing no pedal edema no generalized lymphadenopathy A scratch mass present all over the abdomen. No signs of liver failure. On inspection, abdomen is slightly distended. Umbilicus is centrally placed, normal position, and inverted. All quarters move equally with respiration. A visible mass of size of about 
fixed cross 5 cm which is globular and with regular margins which extend medially to the lateral border of rectus and laterally extend just lateral to the midclavicular line and lower border extends towards la right lumbar region skin normal no scars no sensors no engagements no visible pulsations no visible peristals hernial orifice is normal external genitalia appears normal palpation done in supine position with knees flexed no tenderness no local rise of temperature liver is palpable 2 cm below the right subcostal margin of the midclavicular line surface is smooth uh, uh, surface is surface is smooth border round and firm in consistency a 6 cross 6 cm pear shaped non tender palpable mass just below the right sub, uh, subcostal margin medial to the lateral border of rectus and laterally just lateral to midclavicular line inferior extend to the right lumbar region with smooth surface firm in cons consistency well defined lateral medial inferior and superior margins the superior margin continues with liver border side to side mobility is present and moves with respiration there is no palpable mass other findings of inspiration as confirm percussion upper border of the liver dullness was felt at fifth intercostal space in the midclavicular line with liver span of 12 cm percussion over the gallbladder is continuous with liver dullness no shifting dullness or fluid flow auscultation normal bowel sorts present distal rectal distal rectal examination no skin tags no fissures and sphincter tone is normal no palpable mucosal lesions or deposits full staining pale colored no melina left supraclavicular region no palpable notes lymph nodes systemic examination uh, cardiovascular system s1 and s2 heard and no murmurs uh, respiratory system no vesicular blood sounds present normal vesicular blood sounds present central nervous system higher mental function status intact and no deficit cranium and spine normal summary yeah. yeah sir uh, yeah. a 46 uh, 46 years old male uh, a 46 year old gentleman uh, with uh, who complains of pale color stools and urine for uh, uh, two Very months diagnosis just diagnosis a case of uh, malignant obstructive jaundice probably due to growth in the periambular region of pancreas without any features of cholangitis good why did you mention again he has no cholangitis uh, he doesn't have cholangitis cholangitis right now sir so why, did, why did you specifically mention that with uh, without any features of cholangitis does it make any diagnosis presence of cholangitis or will it rule out uh, sir in, in case of uh, cholangitis we need to first resuscitate the patient and uh... diagnosis that's that's management part So what I would have said is, it's a case of malignant obstructive jaundice, probably due to periambulary uh, growth. So that's what, what you mean. What features are what features are expecting to call it as a cholangitis when you are clinically presenting? Ah, uh, sir. Uh, ab abdominal pain, fever, jaundice. Unless you have seen the patient is running severe pain, abdomen, yes. Gautam, you are making a diagnosis of the obstructive jaundice, but your pulse rate is ninety-two. How do you explain that? Sir, usually in uh, periambulary carcinoma, there is a sinus bradycardia present, sir. No, I, the... That we know. Then in your case, it is ninety-two. Is there is any particular reason? That is why you are saying there is a cholangitis or anything. Hmm. Or uh, the patient is uh, got ten steps on seeing you during examination. <laughs> Why will they have a bradycardia and an obstructive jaundice, Dr. Gautam? Uh, sir, because uh, bile salts will uh, compress or uh, bile salts will cause uh, bile salts will cause SA node depression, sir, leads to sinus bradycardia and myocardial depression factor release. Very good, myocardial depression, and that could be the reason for bradycardia. It can have an impact on the vagus also, which has a vagolytic effect on it. Yes. Yes. Any other differential diagnosis? I'm happy with your diagnosis, but would like to know some more differential diagnosis. Uh, you are so from you are, you are from South India. Suppose if you are in North India, with this kind of an a picture. Could it be an a carcinoma gallbladder still? 
Gautam? Yes, sir. What was sir? How do you explain? Whatever the physical, whatever the physical findings which you described, would it be? Is it according to you? It is a gallbladder mass, no? Yes, sir. Is it a gallbladder uh, mass? Is it a gallbladder mass or gallbladder is palpable? Palpable. Sir, gallbladder is palpable. Ah, so don't say that gallbladder uh -huh. is mass. Both are different. Entirely different. Different, sir. Yes. So another question is why not it's in a carcinoma gallbladder? If you are in the North India, especially around Delhi and Bihar, yes, so the possibility of carcinoma gallbladder you need to entertain. Yes, so how do you explain? The, those your clinical findings differ in these cases. That's what uh, Virabha Sir is asking. Governor, you must start from your age, your sex, and the features, clinical features, and how it is there, and what you are expecting. Sir, in uh, carcinoma gallbladder, uh, age of presentation is uh, old age, sir, uh, with uh, uh, more common in females. Okay. Uh, and uh, and having a progressive jaundice with weight loss and uh, 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 loss of objects. Yeah, there, will be other there, will be, there will be no melina. Yes. Very good. There will not be any melina, whereas this patient has melina. And uh, it's possible sometimes carcinoma at the neck of the gallbladder with the nodes compressing the bile duct and presenting with an obstructive jaundice. Number one. Number two, carcinoma gallbladder at the neck of the gallbladder Extension of the malignancy into the common bile duct presenting with an obstructive jaundice is very well known. So, if you, if you have an, a North Indian examiner, definitely you'll expect a carcinoma gallbladder in this patient. Yes. Okay. So, how do you proceed? Uh, Gautam, you said the liver is palpable for 2 cm from the right castle margin. Again, you said the mass is palpable from the right castle margin. How is it possible? So there is a continuity of the mass on the superior border in the... Then you should have mentioned that superior border is not possible. No, we are very clearly saying from the right castle margin, this mass is... Uh, we are able to see the gallbladder itself. Okay. And the history, you said lot of scratch mark, but in the picture you showed, there is no scratch mark. We said there is scratch marks are present. You could see make the scratch marks. Absolutely no scratch and, marks. And, and you said it is a pear shape. Is it the picture that shows a pear shape mask? That means then we will ask what is pear shape. Globular mask. So little little more cautious on using the appropriate words there. And when you say yes. it's a pear shape, it is a different meaning. Yes. Okay. No, arthritis, you, no? no. When so, you describe the anatomy of the gallbladder, then you describe it as a pear shaped organ. When you are presenting as a mass problem, thinking that it is a gallbladder mass, you have to use the different words, different terminology for that. I think in the examination, it's always better to mention that the gallbladder is distended and palpable rather than yes. describing ah. more about them. You know? Yes, uh, okay, that's, that is absolutely. That's a better way of uh, uh, getting out. You know, we can we can save a lot of uh, time, and we can say definitely hepatomegaly with uh, palpable gallbladder. But then you are giving the examiner no. one more one more option to ask question. Why yeah. do you say it's the gallbladder? Then you have all the answers. Yeah. Yeah. Then you can get some more some more points. Some more yes. points. Yes. 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 PGs can without beating around the bush, you can straight away say it is a gallbladder and the liver. Yes. Okay, sir. Okay. So how do you proceed, Gautam? Uh, sir, uh, sir, first I would like to take uh, blood investigation, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, which includes a complete uh, blood, uh, complete hemogram and uh, renal and liver function test, sir. In complete what hemogram, is, what, I will look What is your interest in complete hemogram? Sir, uh, in complete hemogram, I will look for uh, uh, hemoglobin and uh, hemoglobin, uh, hemoglobin platelets, sir. 
you need to mention why why you are asking all these all these investigations you have to mention the reason behind for investigations i look i look hemoglobin because this patient has melanin yes sir i look for an a total leukocyte count because this patient had cholangitis yes sir yeah you need to mention like that you are a post graduate yes sir hmm okay what next sir you uh, have to you have to give me the reasons why you are asking particular investigation sir i i look for uh, uh, prothrombin in time sir are uh, direct prothrombin in time sir re oh, renal function test liver function test should be taken sir in liver function test uh, look for uh, uh, alp and uh, total bilirubin uh, conjugated bilirubin hmm. so what do you expect in liver function test sir in liver in function in, in, in test patient of obstructive jaundice what do you expect sir in a case of obstructive jaundice there is a uh, elevation of alkaline phosphatase are yaar first you tell me the jaundice which one which component will be raised uh, sir uh, uh, conjugate uh, conjugated bilirubin is elevated sir okay then what sir uh, uh, alp is elevated sir okay if uh, then albumin okay. if sgot sgpt are raised sorry uh, universal you don't, you, don't, you don't you don't find completely normal sgot sb sgpt in obstructive jaundice yes sir you may also see raised sgot and sgpt in the patient has an cholangitis you might even see more than three times elevation of sgot and sgpt of course alkaline phosphate is also raised more than three times what else in lft you look for Now, you can present sure. your uh, close your presentation. Yeah, what else you look for in uh, in uh, liver function test? Sir, I look for albumin and uh, globulin ratios. Okay. Best thing to say in the examination is. not just by albumin and globulin ratio say synthetic function of the liver is most important in this patient because one is is an alcoholic chronic alcoholic second is in an obstructive jaundice there can be derangement in the synthetic function of the liver so i would say i look for an a total proteins serum albumin prothrombin time aptt and inr yes sir gct you know yes sir okay what next uh, sir uh, i i'll order for ultrasound uh, to look for uh, i'll 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 pinlaze you directly i'll not ask any more questions if you say direct i'll go for an ultrasound why would like to know urea creatinine of this patient Will it be deranged in obstructive jaundice urea creatinine? Yes, sir. There is, uh, uh, sir, hypotonal syndrome. You said no. RFT would RFT would like to do it. Tell me why you want to do RFT. That is important, sir. You are you are asking making me to ask many questions. What is hypotonal syndrome? How many types of hypotonal syndrome? And what is the pathogenesis of hypotonal syndrome? You are gone, doomed. I'm telling you. So forget about that. That is different, totally entity. There can be a derangement in the urea creatinine in obstructive jaundice patient. So we'd like to know the urea creatinine levels. Okay. Okay. Then next what? Sure. I I told you I told you already. If you are asking particular investigation, please let me know why you are doing that investigation. Okay, Gautam. Yes, sir. Go yes, sir. You're doing well. Go ahead. Sir, uh, I'll ask for ultrasound abdomen, sir. Hmm. Ah, uh, to look for any intrahepatic biliary radical dilatation and uh, CBD dilatation, pancreatic dilatation, and uh, to look for any uh, consist uh, uh, consistency of the tumor which is solid or cystic, and look for nodes. Sir. 
solid or cystic? Where is the solid cystic tumor? Sir, in uh, CA adult pancreas. What do, you, what do you expect? What is your clinical diagnosis? And what do you expect in ultrasound of the abdomen in this patient? We talk about sir, this there, patient. Sir, there is intrahepatic biliary okay. radical dilatation. One. Uh, there is a CBD dilatation, sir. Two. Uh, pancreatic duct dilatation also, sir. You have left uh, gallbladder. Uh, sir, Whatever the mark you described, no? you want to know details about that. What is the details about that? Palpable, oh, sorry, the, uh, distension of the gallbladder is sir. Okay. What are the ultrasound findings? Uh, what you would like to look into it? Sir, uh, pericholecystic fluid collection, uh, wall thickness. Are you expecting any Are you suspecting cholecystitis? Is it a cholecystitis to have any pericholecystic fluid then? No, sir. no. So we I might know. expect an IHBRD. Yes, sir. We, we might expect an. Would like to know the architecture of the liver. Would like to know whether the CBD is dilated, gallbladder distension. We would like to know level of obstruction. If if ultrasound wise, if the dilatation is still the lower end of the CBD, it means that there is an obstruction at the lower end of the CBD. And apart from that, we'd like to see the pancreas. We'd like to see if there are any nodes around. And we'd like to see if there's an ascites. And SOLs in the liver, of course. Yes, sir. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So, sir, do you have any uh, investigations in this patient? Gautam, we have any investigations here? Yes, sir. Can you please show? And in ultrasound, we definitely would like to know whether the gallbladder wall is thickened or not because another differential diagnosis which I said is carcinoma of the gallbladder. If the thickness of the gallbladder is more than one centimeter, it may need further investigations. Okay. Sir, we did. Uh, we did. Uh, see, sir, ultrasound. LFT. Sir, LFT is there, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Please put it. Sir, or you can okay. read. No problem. Ah yes, sir. <clears throat> How much is the build bin? Conjugated build bin. Why the level of bilirubin is important, Dr. Gautam? Sir? Why the level of bilirubin is important? Sir, uh, uh, in case of obstructive jaundice, uh, uh, bilirubin is, will be more than... Uh, uh, no, 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 I'm asking why the level amount, okay. Sir, because uh, uh, we have to plan whether any... Pre-operative drainage to reduce okay. compression, sir. Okay, fine. Okay. How much is the conjugated bin here? Uh, sir, okay, I'll, I'll tell. 15. Sir, total. Hmm, yeah. Uh, sir. Okay. Total? Uh, total bin, uh 19, sir. Mm -hmm. Direct direct bin. 17. Okay. Hmm. SGOT, SGPT, ALP? Sir, SGOT, one, SGOT 113, SGPT 15, ALP uh, 700, sir. Oh, see, SGOT is also elevated. SGPT is also elevated. Probably this patient might have had a cholangitis, recent cholangitis. That's the reason why we are seeing SGOT, SGPT raised. In addition to the raised alkaline phosphatase, which is 700. Yes, okay. And PT? Synthetic, synthetic function of the liver? Sir, uh, PT 23, sir. Mm. INR 2, sir. Mm. Mm. Is it normal or abnormal? How much is the normal INR? Sir, uh, normal INR. 
less hmm less than 1.5 is normal sir so it's prolonged yes prothrombin time prothrombin time 20 uh, sir normal range is uh, 14 to 16 sir now here in this patient 17 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 18 
Okay. What should? So what next? What shall we do? What is the ఇన్వెస్టిగేషన్ Sir, uh, I would like to go for uh, CCT with Pankradi protocol, sir. Okay, why CCT? What is the indication? Uh, sir, uh, for, uh, for staging of the tumor and for nodes, sir. Okay, for staging the disease and then? Sir, involvement of the vital structure, sir. What do you want to assess this? Indirectly, what do you want to assess? Uh, sir, uh, uh, superior mesenteric vein and portal vein involvement. Operability. In other words, you would like to stay the disease and as well as for the operability also. Okay. okay Which are the important structures you need to consider when you are planning for a, when you think of about the plan, uh, involvement of the other structures? Sir, uh, uh, superior mesenteric vein and portal vein uh, involvement. Uh, 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 surrounding nodes, sir. right notes is a contraindication for surgery sorry involvement of the notes uh, sir uh, contraindication for surgery there will be whether there will be any uh, distant meds and uh, free fluid the abdomen free fluid to the abdomen if you do aspirate and do the cytology many other times the cytology will be negative in those cases it is a, the reactionary fluid is seen in most of the cases of obstructive jaundice some amount of ascites will be there invariably in all the cases of an obstructive jaundice so it doesn't mean that they are containing malignant cells okay ah uh, if there are liver meds are there then what are other contraindication for surgery uh, sir there are some absolute and there are some relative contraindication for that yes sir superior mesenteric vein involvement per se is not an absolute contraindication it could be still a relative contraindication if you can plan for the resection and anastomosis or you can use any segmental patch okay what about the superior mesenteric artery uh, sir uh, superior mesenteric artery involvement is a contraindication uh, more than 180 degrees involvement of superior mesenteric artery is a yeah. contraindication for uh, if you look at the circumference of the artery at 360 degrees is beyond 180 degrees probably is a, a, a contraindication for that i have heard about the word what is but undissectable or a bottle undissectable yes, sir uh, sir for bottle undissectable sir. Uh, sir, for unresectability, there will be involvement of superior mesenteric vein and portal vein uh, for more than uh, 180 degrees. And uh, yes. superior mesenteric vein, uh, superior mesenteric artery and the celiac artery involvement of more than 180 degrees. Yeah, they are the absolute contraindication for a, a surgery. Bira okay. Pasar, please take off. I'll just go back. I want to go back, Gautam. Uh, we have done ultrasound and it showed a double duct sign. Would you like to go for an CT imaging? MRI or you would like to do an, a side wing endoscopy and then confirm the ampullary malignancy and then go for imaging. Or which one is the correct? He said CT scan. Sir, I will go for CT scan and then I will go for uh, uh, side wing endoscopy. Okay. okay. I mean, it all depends upon Uh, which institution you practice so you may do and sometimes in side wing endoscopy take if there is an lesion at the ampulla take a biopsy and go for an a, a ct scanning to know whether it's an operable or inoperable okay okay suppose side wing endoscopy did not show any growth this patient did not show any growth at the ampulla Okay. So what will you do? Simple, if there is periampular growth, then no growth. 
if there is a growth you said ct scan if there is no growth what will you do would you like to change the uh, choice of investigation since we are also contemplating could be an chronic pancreatitis sir um, uh, md ct sir getting getting a, we need to know the cholangiogram basically basically my question is pointing to how to get a cholangiogram and pancreatogram so the best investigation would be mrcp with mri that will give a cholangiogram as well as pancreatic duct ductal status whereas you can also get cholangiogram in a ct scan but you need to give a more contrast you know to get a ct cholangiogram so this is all if there is no uh, preampulary growth okay you have done a side wing endoscopy and cytos ct scan has been done and uh, biopsy which is in a, a poorly differentiated adenocarcinoma how do you manage next are you in the diagnosis ah uh, professor at the point of discussion uh, would you please little highlight our uh, post graduates role of us and uh, take out the biopsy really really need of the hour or not no if there is an ampullary malignancy yes. so there is no need for an endo us unless 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 if there is a big growth which is and ct scan showing an infiltration into the artery superior mesenteric artery, artery. artery yes. so endo us has a role it can look for an artery and vein and then plan for a resectable okay for the nodal biopsy do you recommend because you need no, later no ct not scan not. is the best ct okay. scan is the best or if you have an cystic neoplasms in the in the pancreas head of the pancreas where you wanted to know uh, the cytology and tumor markers endo yes has a role cholangiocarcinoma yes there is a role for an endo yes you can take a biopsy so there is a role for endo yes not in ampullary malignancy and not in operable ca head of the pancreas yes so guidelines are the same for the uh, putting the fnc And not to do FNC when you use the US are the same. Yeah. So what will you do, Dr. Tom? Side wing endoscopy showed ulcerated lesion. The ampulla biopsy is positive. CT scan, no artery involvement, no portal vein involvement. Uh, sir, I will go for uh, pancreatic view in the table. Yes. Okay. so can you just give few steps of uh, people's procedure yeah. sir first uh, operation should be very good very good one minute yes sir mm -hmm. uh, sir cauterization should be done then uh, cattle brush maneuver should be done and uh, i can uh, maneuver you said cauterize we, we have to sir we have to expose third and fourth part of deodorant for that you need to do first is the Cattle breast maneuver. You need to take down the hepatic flexor down. Then you need to do the cauterization. Yeah. Okay. okay. And look for, look for. Ah, uh, sir, look for resectability. Ah, uh, uh, by passing, uh, by checking. No, no, no. no. You, said, you said cauterization is done. Why you need to do a cauterization? Sir, to know <laughs> whether the tumor, ah, uh, uh, tumor infiltration. Uh, to the retro perfusion structure. That, but ampullary tumor will go there, or we will expect some lymph nodes there. Sir, lymph nodes, sir. Ah, lymph nodes, no. Yes, sir, lymph nodes. We like to sample those lymph nodes, parietic lymph nodes, intercaval nodes. So, if the sampling is positive, then we may not proceed. If the if the, if the lymph nodes are negative, and then we will proceed for an abdominal procedure. Yes, sir. So any other questions, colleagues? So he has presented well, sir. No, uh, yeah. It will be internet connection uh, poor, but still you could uh, yeah. answer most of the questions. Sir, uh, I have, sir, I have one doubt, sir. Yeah, sir. Yes. Uh, sir, in uh, sir, breast cytology or uh, FNC, which one is uh, superior, sir? Or, uh, Both only thirty percent positivity rate. Sir, whether uh, cytology, sir, we, breast cytology, or cytology, or FNC in a colangiocarcinoma, it's only thirty percent. 
basically in hpb malignancies okay, the radiological criteria is most important radiological findings are most important it's operable or inoperable when the when the findings radiological findings are unequivocal or not uh, what should i say not characteristic of malignancy then there is a need for a biopsy for example ampullary lesion you do a side wing biopsy endoscopy and biopsy if that is a positive ct scan for an operability if there is cholangia carcinoma lower end of the cbd you might do an endo es or in a biopsy or cytology it's not a mandatory okay invariably these patients will have very high bilirubin okay means malignancy you don't see high bilirubin in in a stone disease okay so in where we there are malignancies so if you have the facilities you can do a breast biopsy or breast cytology or endo es fnac which yields around 30% only so okay. if radiologically resectability uh, is radiological confirmation is enough yes enough okay enough. thank you sir. thank you one more important thing even though it is a resectable disease one should always proceed with a diagnostic laparoscopy because you could able to likely to miss about the peritoneal deposits which cannot be picked up by conventional uh, uh, ct or an mri so it is always a good practice to proceed the laparotomy with the laparoscopy uh, so that you can assessment is also better particularly to rule out uh, the peritoneal deposits which can be missed by conventional ct more so with the carcinoma head of the pancreas not not in ampullary malignancies yes i do i do agree yes sir kanwel sir sir yeah is it time is over or sir we, we if we have any important questions we definitely can allow two or three minutes sir i'll be we'll call it a close sir yeah any questions please dr gautha what is the normal size of cbd Sir, CBD, uh, CBD, sixty-eight mm, sir. Is it same throughout the age or ages? You have to begin with the different age groups, the different diameters. Are you aware of that? Like for this no. patient who is forty-seven year old, what is normal size? And suppose they are seventy year old. what is the normal size and post cholecystectomy cbd what happens to the cbd post cholecystectomy uh, cystectomy cbd size increase hmm. okay. prominent cbd just one question from my side also <laughs> hello Yeah, so, it's like it's so it is uh, 30 years like 3, 3 millimeters 40 4 55 66 and beyond 60 remain 6 only it won't increase for me it okay. won't be like for me it won't be 7 mm <laughs> more than 7 mm you should consider as dilated okay more than 7 mm okay okay 6 to 7 what is the Satish, you have a question. Yeah. Uh, what is the role of pre-operative uh, stenting? Means, uh, in, in what case will you send the patient for pre-operative stenting? Or sometimes, if the stenting is done, then uh, what Watch difficulties it. you face? Sir, uh, pre-operative PTBD is indicated for patients when they are in septicemia or having comorbidities. Uh, carefully, lesion question carefully. What are the indications for preoperative drainage? That is the question. Am I correct, Dr. Satish? When there is, Dr. Satish, am I correct? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, indication for preoperative drainage. Sir, when the uh, when uh, when the bilirubin is more than uh, uh, more than twenty. And uh, patient is in septicemia and are having comorbidities, and uh, we, we need to go for uh, uh, pre-operative stenting. Cholangitis. One is cholangitis. Cholangitis. Is, yeah, and bilirubin is more than fifteen, not twenty. I mean, okay. it all depends upon the institution to institution. 
so we at least uh, more than 15 uh, uh, we would like to drain it stent so less than 15 we do vira prasad routinely you, you drain anything beyond 15 at your institute yes yes you you, you take solely this factor is a uh, one of the component for draining uh, only only yeah. raised will be no other associated factor also take into consideration use your only 15 more than 15 uh we in fact even with the 20 we have done a surgery but we have taken a cut off of 15 more than 15 even iasg indian association surgical gastroenterology also confirmed that more than 15 will have post operative morbidity hence it needs to be drained number one number two patient yeah, with cholangitis out. patient with cholangitis okay. needs to be drained yeah, cholangitis is absolutely indication for that but only decide only on the risk bilirubin level many times is it a strict criteria or a, it varies from uh, person to person distribution yeah but chances of post operative morbidity complicated yeah. more yeah. more bilirubin that's what the poor outcome we may Huh? What difficulty you have if the um, stenting has been done during surgery? Any additional difficulty you face? Yeah, yeah. Cholangitis. I mean, there will be pericolidocal inflammation, neovascularity, neovascularity, and and wound infection rate is more with a patient having a stent. Yeah. Okay, that's all. <coughs> Okay. Thank you, Kanagwal sir. We can consider. Yes, sir. Can we call it a close, sir, with the permission of the faculty? Virupa sir and Ishwar sir, thank you very much, sir. I could thank see Jayal sir Jayal staying with all through the class. Karna Karan sir, Lakshman Prasad sir, Satish Mehta sir. Uh, thank you for joining. And I could see a lot of other faculty who came in and met me, went in between. Shanai sir and Kanna sir had to leave. We heard here they messaged me. Thank you very much, and I thank uh, the professors of Madras Medical College for kindly contributing these two students. So we look forward for uh, next Friday, and uh, for your kind information, we are uh, almost touching three lakh viewership of our class because it looks like all the previous classes are also being watched now. So we are just uh, uh, going to touch yes. maybe in a week's time or so we will cross three lakh viewership. Thanks all to the faculty, all to the students, and all the participants for making this more known and uh, more a uh, standard of teaching affair. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everyone. Good night, sir. More congratulations night, to you, sir, night. for your efforts and for your persistence to conduct these academic programs. Sir, and you deserve all the credit. You deserve all I the credit. I will take one. I only coordinate, sir. I only integrate the respective faculty for the respective cases, sir. That is also a great commendable job, sir. Great commendable job. Thank you, sir. Everybody is our team, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank Good you, night, sir. sir. Uh, okay. Good night. Sir. Good night, sir. Good night, Good night everybody. Welcome and sabari. And I also uh, thank all the people who have joined.